Hey, everybody. Um, I'm Dave. I go by Reverend Hoddle, and uh, that's my Twitter name. Uh, <clears throat> appreciate the invite to come and, uh, and join everybody tonight. So uh, this is uh, Bit Dev Vancouver 005, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that and get some things together. Uh, it's going to be a good program, and uh, uh, a lot of you, if this is your first time, welcome. And if you've been here before, you probably know the, the format. So, uh, what can you say about Bitcoin? It's always an exciting space. It's uh, a lot going on, and uh, of course, this this month, this this quarter isn't any exception. And um, just to get an idea, now maybe a lot of you know one another, but maybe uh, the, the audience online won't see. But how many people were involved uh, prior to 2013 that, that been around Bitcoin? So, a couple. Anybody uh, that was pre. 2015, coming in around that range, and, and I'm not saying you bought anything. I just got interested in Bitcoin. How about uh, there's a couple. How about when? Let's go ahead. Before 19, 2019, and then uh, just recently. Anybody just come on recently, or maybe hasn't done any Bitcoin stuff? All right. So we got a good we got a good balance. Okay, something new. So the idea tonight is uh, uh, it's everybody's welcome at these meetings uh, you don't necessarily have to have a technical bent or what have you uh, uh, and I think I always say no question is a, is a dumb question we're here to learn and and get some lessons you know and uh, as I said with this interesting space what are the uh, the recent lessons if you've been around for a while uh, perhaps you're like me you had to learn a lesson uh, about what yield is really all about and uh, we know what we're talking about when we say this this whole DeFi thing. So um, I've heard from some really smart people that got, shall we say, lured into the idea. I mean, how can you argue that? If somebody says, well, you know what, your Bitcoin's sitting there right now, it's not really doing, it's bouncing up and down, why don't you try to get uh, uh, some yield? And 20% uh, though, that was not necessarily something that was gonna pan out, and I think we can all learn a lesson from that right now. Not your Bitcoin, not your, uh, or not your keys, not your Bitcoin, right? Yeah. So there's a good lesson. So if you're a noob, and sorry, a, a new coiner, or a, a, no, uh, a Bitcoiner who's just joined, whatever the term might be, um, ask some questions of this group. Ask, ask questions of people that have been around for a while, because uh, at least from my experience, Bitcoiners are, are always happy to share, and you know we've all started somewhere once. So the other, uh, the other thing that seems to be uh, a, a, of a bit of interest, if I, I look at uh, the lessons that we've got. Um, what else is happening in the space? There's this thing called the merge. And uh, that's an inside joke for most people that understand. Uh, proof of stake versus proof of work. And again, if you're new to Bitcoin, ask that question. What does that really mean? And I think I saw a meme the other day that, that made the most sense to me. So there's been billions of dollars and whatever, five, eight, six, eight years of development to essentially reinvent fiat is all that has happened. So we'll have to see, you know, not to be smug, but we'll have to see what goes on with proof of stake. And there's going to be some lessons for us to learn in that uh, as well. So again, whether you're new, whether you've been around, we can always learn some lessons. So uh, a little bit about uh, my background. I, I first got, uh, I was first aware of Bitcoin in 2011, and uh, I don't think it was any any of a big deal. I, I don't, frankly, I don't even remember hearing the word Bitcoin. But I was looking for uh, I was looking for some <coughs> micro transactions, and I I met up with a guy, and he was telling me about this thing. Man, this is you know all all the exciting stuff, and he used all these terms that unless there was another uh, white paper that came out in that time, which it could have been, but I don't think so. I think he was talking about Bitcoin, and I, and I uh, what I was doing for business. I'll get into that in a minute, but um, I wanted to see sub penny transactions. So there was PayPal, there was credit cards, but of course with transaction fees, that's just not feasible. So I asked this guy, says, is this is this logical? And in 11, he's like, yeah, but nobody's, there's no value. <laughs> Nobody was uh, actually trading uh, Bitcoin at that time. Of course, until pizza day, right? Mm -hmm. So um, as it turned out, I, I lost interest because it wasn't going to fit the, uh, the objective I had. And then had not really had Bitcoin on my radar until this Mt. Gox hack that we heard about. And um, I, I said to my wife at the time, I said, 
oh, this, this Bitcoin thing has been hacked. But when you listen to it, it actually the protocol didn't get hacked. This was, this was a network or, a, or a, 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 an exchange that had really shitty uh, OPSEC. And uh, basically, it, it was just a back door. It was like leaving the vault open in, in, uh, in the bank. So I got excited about that, and, and I took a look, and the price, and I'm not gonna, we're not going to focus on price because it really doesn't matter, but just for a point of reference, it was around 250 bucks. So $250 Bitcoin. Uh, I'd love to tell you I bought some at the time, but I didn't because I didn't know how. I didn't, and even if I figured out how, I didn't have a clue how I was going to store it. So we had to learn. I had to go through the rabbit hole, as it were, and uh, was sharing with a couple of people earlier tonight. Uh, there wasn't a lot of resources at that time. There was a, a show on YouTube, uh, World Crypto Network, if any of you ever saw that. And uh, it was it was kind of a place where you'd get some information. And a lot of the, uh, what we would call OGs of today, they kind of got their <coughs> start on that program. And uh, I bet you follow a lot of them today. So shout out to that original program, because it was a great place to, to learn and to get information together. So once I started kind of figuring some things out, then then it was uh, it was time to to dive in and, and make sure that I could secure Bitcoin, etc. cetera. Uh, technically speaking, I, I've been in the telecom industry. Uh, that's kind of what I started doing as a career. And uh, telecommunications, uh, that used to basically just mean telephone network. But now, of course, it's IP, it's the internet, it's the whole thing. But back in the day, uh, the early telecom was all analog. And uh, we were just getting into uh, the idea of, of digital. So this led me to, uh, to a thing, we didn't call it that at the time, but it was streaming, streaming audio. And uh, we ran a version of software, if, if anybody was early at the streaming thing, you might remember Real Player. Remember that thing, Real Player? I don't know if anybody uses it anymore. I'd be interested to know if you did. Oh good, you still use it? No, no, no. You know? Yeah, okay. Well, this was before they even called it Real Player version one, I think it was Zing, Zing technology, and it absolutely blew me away. We, we were going to be able to send a signal over this internet. It was all dial-up, so it was all on modem. Uh, you know, uh, if, if you had a, a, what was that, I think 28, 28K was about the fastest most people were doing. So this audio sounded like a really lousy AM radio signal. But what it was going to do, and why I got so excited about this, it was going to disrupt this industry that I became very disillusioned with, which was formatted radio. Uh, as radio centralized and it became formatted, didn't matter if you're in Vancouver, Toronto, Los Angeles, classic rock sounded exactly the same. The Rolling Stones had five songs, and that was formatted radio. Of course, we know they have way more than five songs, but that didn't sell Pepsi Cola and, and Bubblegum. So I, I wanted to change radio, and what I didn't understand at the time is Radio was centralized, and I was looking to disrupt or to decentralize what was happening in the audio space. So that thing was going to, we're going to hear this as, as what I did uh, go, went forward. So uh, I, I was with that company. It was one of three uh, companies that I founded uh, or was a founder in. And uh, anyhow, it was through the dot-com craze. But uh, before I lost millions and millions of dollars, uh, I'll go back, and when I say that, in, on paper only, I never actually had them in my hand, kind of like not your keys, you know. But uh, anyhow, the crash, it didn't, didn't matter, coulda, shoulda, woulda. But before I, I was doing streaming, I was in an industry called Interconnect. And I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but Interconnect was a telephone equipment that could be sold. It was deregulated. But here comes that centralization thing again. Back in the day, and we're talking early 1980s, the telephone company, Ma Bell, that's what they call it, Ma Bell. Ma Bell was the only place you could get a telephone uh, piece of equipment and a telephone line. You had to go to the phone company, centralization. So they said, well, we're going to deregulate. We're going to allow equipment to be sold and hang off these phone lines. So that was interconnect. So here comes this equipment. And uh, I should also tell you that um, I'm, I, I never really saw myself as a computer guy. Um, I, I didn't think I would, frankly, ever even use a computer. I had no idea. And I'm, I'm talking late 70s, early 80s. Uh, I was more interested in, in other things, but uh, I went to high school, at, and uh, there was a guy in our, uh, our high school at the time. And at, at noon, while we were all playing Frisbee, he was in the computer lab, and he was really excited about these things that were happening. We couldn't figure 
what, what he was so excited about. He went on to, to uh, head up uh, Electronic Arts. So um, I won't use names, but you can probably connect the dots. It was, it was pretty cool. So this, this, well, we were playing Frisbee, this guy was seeing the future. And, uh, and he definitely made good on that. But um, so back to interconnect. Here's this black device. It's a fancy phone with a bunch of buttons and things on it. And I'm looking at this, and, and I, I, I realize, well, it's not the analog phone of BCTEL anymore. It's, it's a device, and you can press on hold, or you could press conference call, or you could bring up a list of basically a phone book. So this was talking to, through a digital cable, to a black box in a closet somewhere, and a CPU was running. And I realized, I, I'm actually running a computer. But it's a friendly interface. I've got a, I've got a dial pad. I know how to work a dial pad. So as I could press the numbers, I could talk to a computer. And I thought, well, that's kind of cool. So we were disrupting the phone business. We were, we were decentralizing the phone business. And I was running a computer. So I looked around and went, well, where else might this be happening? And I took out my, my card. It was a credit card at the time. But I used to push it in a machine that was in the wall of the bank. And if you didn't have to go in the bank, you put your card in and you could press some numbers. And money came out. So this was amazing. This was like uncanny. You didn't have to analog, do an analog bank transaction. You could use another computer with a friendly interface. It talked through the banking network. It went in and knew that I had money, which I often didn't in the case. But whenever I did, it would spit money out and, and uh, unbelievable interface. And here we were in, in the banking industry. So I, one more thing. Uh, I'm old enough to remember when Holmes had one television. And they were in a room, the television room, whatever that was. And if you wanted to change the channel, you had to get up out of your chair and you had to flip a dial. And there's only 13 options on this thing and, and very, very less content than that. But that was how we analog switched television. So along comes the remote. And what does that really mean? Interface again. We got this interface that allowed us to get into a thousand cable channels, as it were. So we were part of a human experiment that now created 24-hour news, 24-hour sports, 24-hour business, movie channels, you name it. It was all on us. We were getting used to this interface. So this was kind of cool, and uh, it, it, it led me to, to basically be where uh, I arrived at uh, Bitcoin, looking back at everything. What, what had happened? We went from command line, which I couldn't write, to an interface called Netscape Navigator that pictures just appeared. You could click a button. Cool interface. We went from banking going into a teller to being able to press some buttons and eventually our, our accounts online. Uh, we digitized the banking industry. So what what is Bitcoin and what was the aha moment for me was when I took a look and went, Bitcoin is kind of like networking, Netscape Navigator, ATMs, all branched into one and it's decentralized. So what we really need now is interface. And I guess that's kind of a, a, a segue into tonight and into what we can be talking about as we go through these BitDev um, uh, events and, and various things, is what can we add as the human experiment into interface? What can we do? How can we make it easier? And there is no crazy suggestion or, or idea. Because how do we know? Developers are, are, are brilliant but they can only work with what they have, and that's the own ideas in the head. So if we can give more feedback, more ideas, uh, eventually the wallets that are in our phones and, and the devices that I, I like, uh, like I saw earlier, these things are going to proliferate, and they're going to make it so easy so that today we don't, we don't worry about Grandma sending an email. She's got it. She knows how to do it. Uh, we have to make it that simple for her to use Bitcoin and to pay and, uh, and, and to make that work. So interface is going to be where it's at. Uh, it's exciting. It's, uh, it's an amazing time to be part of this. And I guess I would say that the one other uh, great thing that Bitcoin uh, really does through the disruption by its decentralization is it gives the ultimate and, and a warning. I'm going to use a, a language because we're online. Fuck you to the central banks. Okay? I think we got to say that. It's, uh, you know, this time for us to take this back. This is our one chance to do this, please. Uh, We've got this opportunity, and um, I, I will also just add one thing that how, how great this is uh, with the space here at um, uh, for, for BitDevs, and I want to shout out to Murdoch Media, 
Yeah. All right, great job. I mean, under pressure. I've done live streaming before. This guy, you were awesome. Uh, it's always pressure. You know, it's a thankless job to get a live stream going when when power fails. He didn't even have AC. So, anyways, good on you. You did a great job. Mm -hmm.